Thank you for joining me for everything that you're going to need to know about Arcana Rising. It plays up to six players. The game is published by Gray Fox, and each one of you are an established rising star in the world of mages. This game is going to allow you to draft cards, cast spells, build engines, and have a lot of fun. Join me for Arcana Rising. All right, so let's start off with the components. There are 108 spell cards, and these 108 spell cards are divided into three different stacks of 36. Now you use one of those stacks per phase of the game. There are 150 cubes. You have 120 small cubes and 30 large cubes. There are six player boards or placemats or tableaus, one for each player. There are six scoring cards, one for each player. There is a spell board. With score tracking cubes and 10 moon tokens. You notice each one of these moon tokens shares an icon with a different discipline of magic and a bag to stick all your moon tokens in. I call it the moon token bag. So that is the components, really super fast and simple. Next, I'll show you how to set the game up. So for setup, each player gets one of these tableaus or player boards. They get a score tracker, and you place your tokens on the score tracker board. Then you take the small tokens, the small cubes, and each player gets one of each resource. Next, you place the spell board out. And that's done for every player. That is set up super, super easy. Now, the only thing is when you uh, set up for each phase, each round of the game, there's, like I said before, there's three rounds, you'll take your moon token bag and then randomly place a moon token on each one of these slots in the spell board. This is done randomly. Now the only thing left to do is grab the appropriate deck for whatever turn that you're in. Make sure she's good and shuffled up. And then deal out six cards. Now that's it. That's complete setup for the game, including each individual round setup. So the goal of the game is to be the most accomplished mage with the most victory points. And primarily you're gonna get these victory points from the resources that you have. So for example, if you look at charm, there's a three to one ratio for victory points at the end of the game. So if you have three charm resources, you get one victory point. If you have four charm resources, you get one victory point. If you have three charm resources and one potion, you still only get one victory point. The potion, charm, and herbology all share that three to one ratio at the end of the game. Now, blood magic and alchemy are just a little bit different. Blood magic is so valuable and so useful during the course of the game. If you're left with any resources left on your tableau, it's gonna give you a negative one victory point instead of a victory point bonus. Alchemy, on the other hand, is more useful as a resource, and it's going to give you one per one. So for every alchemy resource you have, you get one victory point. In each turn, you're going to either draft or cast. I'm gonna show you an example of drafting, but before I do that, I have to show you card anatomy. 
The logo at the top, left-hand side of the card, is the discipline of magic. For example, this one is alchemy. Underneath that is its cost. So for example, this one costs one potion, or, and that's an or, you can use three of any other resources to make that happen. And it can be a combination of resources as well. Down at the bottom, it's gonna tell you what the ability is for that card. So I'm going to go ahead and draft this card. The next thing you'll do is you'll pass the remaining five cards, because you started with six, to the next player. On rounds one and three, you'll pass to the left, and on round two, you'll pass to the right. And that'll give you a new hand of five cards to choose from. So, as my instincts are telling me, I am looking for something that's gonna help me with resources and victory points, and this one's got no casting cost. So, as you'll see in that card, there's no casting cost for the potion. It costs me nothing to get it into play. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that down onto my player board, and then pass my cards along. So now you're only going to have four cards in your hand. And, you know, I would like to go ahead and utilize and cast. So I'm going to discard a card. And more than likely, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look around the board and see uh, what players next to me have what, and I'm gonna try to discard something that they're gonna need. And that's gonna allow me to cast. So I had four cards in my hand. So you go to the spell board, see that there's the number four. That's the phase of the moons that you're in. It activates my potion. So I'll get this activated and I'll activates my alchemy. So I will have the ability to transfer blood magic to gold. So this will continue passing and drawing or discarding until you have only one card left in your hand. When you do have one card left in your hand, you're able to cast everything but only at the very bottom rows. When the last card is played, the round is over. You reset these tokens by placing them into the bag, shuffling them up, and then placing out tokens back onto the board in a random order. Then you will draw out cards, six cards from the next deck. This is round two, so the next deck We'll have the icon of number two on it. Each player gets six cards, drafting and discarding the whole way until they get down to zero, until they get to the very end of the game when no one has any cards left. The only thing I want to mention is that there are a couple of other cards. For example, this one is called an artifact, and the artifact will get you victory points at the end of the game, and you'll place the artifact to the left of your player board, and you can have as many artifacts as you can afford. This one has no cost on it, so that's a great little artifact. There are also events, and when you pay the cost for an event, it goes into your discard pile. And it's important to keep that straight because there are some cards that give you bonuses. For example, this great little potion, it gives you bonuses based on the amount of cards that are in your discard pile. Also note, if you get two moon tokens of the same kind on the same phase of the game, you get to do that discipline twice. So when the last card is played on the very last round of the game, you will total up all of your resources, make sure you subtract for your blood magic, and don't forget your artifact cards are gonna add in there as well, and only then you will see who is the best mage. Thank you very much for joining me for this How to Play. I'm Patrick from Just Got Played.